Hi, my name is Silas Marcus, and I'm the Information Literacy and Off-Campus Services Librarian at James White Library. And today, we're going to be searching the James White Library's webpage. The main objectives of this session are learn how to find resources navigating the James White Library's webpage, and to learn how to build an effective search strategy using the article databases. In this session, we're going to cover choosing a manageable topic, identifying keywords, narrowing and broadening the search, ways to find materials through the library's webpage and also in the web, using James White Library's catalog, finding background information, finding articles using the research guides that we have available in the databases, building a search strategy, identifying scholarly articles, and finally, evaluating the source's credibility. Any research will start with choosing a topic. Some people say that it's the most difficult part of the research, and I also agree with that, because in my own research, it's always very difficult, I find, at sometimes, to come up with a very interesting, manageable, creative, and relevant research topic, because that's what it is needed. The difficulty comes not because there are not enough topics out there for us to choose from or to come up with, it's the other way around. There's so much to be investigated. There's so much to be researched and so many questions we have about any topic that it makes it difficult to come up with a very interesting, manageable, creative, relevant topic that will satisfy our needs. Obviously, if it's a long research, like for a doctoral degree or a master's degree, it will have one scope, right? But if it's a college, a final paper, it's a different scope. And if it's uh, an assignment on a paper, a three, five, 10 page paper, it's a different scope. But it needs to be manageable. And this is what we're going to see in how to choose and narrow the topic, choose a good topic and narrow this topic so it can be manageable. I'll be showing now a video that it's located in our website. Here we have the library's website. You can go to the Andrews University's website and students scroll down and you find the library's page. These videos that I'm going to show, I'm going to show two of them, one right now and the other one at the end, they're all part of what we call Credo Instruct. Credo is the name of a company and Instruct is a program. They have many information literacy tutorials there and they have many videos, actually around 60 different videos. So how to get there, you just scroll down at the library's website, go to information literacy icon, then information literacy modules, and here, here you have six different modules with many tutorials, as you can see, and videos and exercises and tests. Really interesting material here. So at the getting started with research, which is the first one, I'm going to look for a video right over here, how to narrow your topics. So let's watch this video. It's a three minute video or so. Well, I have to put my username and password to assess this. And here we are, it took a little bit. Let's watch this three minutes video. During your academic career, you'll be assigned research papers that let you choose your own topic. With so many areas of research available, the tough part is deciding where to start. This video will break down the cyclical nature of the research process and explain how to choose and narrow a topic into an appropriate research question and how to explore your topic through strategic searching. Research is not a one-time act that's completed once you submit your research paper. Instead, it's an open-ended exploration and engagement with information with opportunities for discovery at every stage in the process, including choosing and narrowing your topic. 
When writing your paper, you may start looking into one topic, then adjust it as you continue to research and develop new insights. Choosing an initial focus doesn't mean you're stuck with it throughout the entire research process. When choosing a topic to research, start with a broad area of interest. What do you want to know more about? Maybe you're observing a situation and asking questions like, why, what caused that, how? If something interests you or provokes questioning, it may be a good area to research further. Another way to form a research question is to look for information gaps already present in your area of interest. Do you see conflicting areas of information? Is there something that hasn't already been addressed? By asking these questions, you may find a new path you'd like to explore. Once you have a topic you want to learn more about, determine an appropriate scope of investigation. An initial research topic may be too broad to be the subject of an effective paper. Break down your research question into smaller ones that are more specific and manageable. For example, researching internet search engines may interest you, but this is too broad a topic to research. There are hundreds of search engines, and it would be impossible to conduct effective research on all of them at once. Try getting more specific. Maybe you're interested in the negative aspects of some search engines. This is a step in the right direction, but the topic still is too broad and doesn't answer a research question. Take it one step further. Maybe you'll decide to focus on the privacy issues surrounding Google. A research question might be, what privacy issues are Google users experiencing and how are they being affected? This question specifies the search engine you're focusing on, which negative effects you're addressing, and how online users are affected. Always maintain an open mind and critical stance when forming your research question. You may end up going in a direction you didn't originally envision, but that's what makes the research process so dynamic. Now that you've narrowed your topic and formulated a research question, it's time to begin your search. First, determine the initial scope of your task. If you're researching a topic you're unfamiliar with, you should start with background research. Then you can move to searching more in-depth sources. Before delving into complicated searches, brainstorm keywords and concepts and try searching different resources using each of these. By doing so, you may discover other concepts. Always be flexible when searching. Be open to searching different resources and using a variety of keywords to make selecting the best resource an easier process. The initial results you find may cause you to rethink or adjust your topic further, but remember, that's part of the cyclical nature of the research process. By viewing research this way, you'll find more enjoyment and success in your next paper. Don't be afraid to seek help from a librarian or professor during any stage of the research process. They're here to help. Okay, so now I'm going to move to the James White Library's website to show you another tool called a mind map where you can further develop your or structure your research topic. You can narrow it or you can broaden it using this mind map tool that it's also from Credo, this company that we just saw promoting the video. So I'll be sharing the library's website now. Here it is. And where we're going to get this mind map is also through Credo Reference. So we're going to that database, clicking on search and find. Database is A to Z, the second link there. And since I know the title of this database, which is Credo Reference, we go in alphabetical order, C, scroll down, until we find Creator Reference. Creator Reference is here. This is actually a database for encyclopedias, dictionaries, manuals, handbooks, reference works. And here you'll find thousands actually of articles on any given topic. But what we are interested right now is to find the mind map so we can build a nice and organizable and manageable topic. So let's write the topic here, which would be Native Americans. We'll do a search. And it found 43, more than 43,000 hits, but we're interested in this mind map, which will help us establish and develop the structure of our paper giving us more ideas on topics, narrowing or broadening the search. Let's say that from here, 
we choose the United States. And now it opens up a new mind map, having the United States as the center. And here we could choose any one of these, Supreme Court of the United States, United States Constitution, the Democratic Party, and so forth. Um, let's see United States Constitution, for instance. How would this open up our search to new terms? And here we have United States Bill of Rights, First Amendment, and so forth. Uh, if we go United States Bill of Rights, and then it opens up not only a new search over in this side, but in this side, and you can also increase the screen, it opens up to new possibilities. These, these are all ideas for the topic of your paper. So we have our topic, Indians in North America, social life, customs and culture. From here then, we need to find out and select the keywords of this topic. One of the keyword words obviously could be Indians. We need to find synonyms for each one of these keywords. So for Indians, I came up with Native Americans, Aboriginal Americans. Another keyword could be and should be North America. A synonym or a related word or words for this could be America, USA, or even the regions of the United States, like West, East, South, or North. Another key word would be social life. And it seems to me that communal or societal life could be synonyms or related words to social life. Another key word would be customs. And this we can replace if we need with traditions, ceremonies, and rituals. And finally, the word culture. It could be replaced or uh, find another related word such as rituals. Now, why are we doing this? Why are we coming up with keywords? That's an easy answer, obviously. It's so we can use them to find materials when we search the databases or the web. But how about the synonyms? Why are they important? Well, the importance of these synonyms or related words is because searching the databases in websites for the best or the most relevant resources is a matter of finding a balance between narrowing and broadening the search. If we broaden the search, you're going to get many hits, but not all of them will be relevant. However, if we narrow our search, you're going to get fewer hits, but most of them most likely will be relevant. And this is very important to create a balance between broadening and narrowing so we can get the best results possible. And the extra words that we have, the synonyms and the related words, they can be used in replacing those original keywords if needed. And many times they are very, very useful. Now, when we use the, these other words, the related words, the synonyms, are we broadening the search or are we narrowing the search? What do you think? Obviously, the more words we use, the broader will be our search. Once you have the topic and you've defined the keywords and the synonyms and related words, you can start your search or your research. And there are several ways that you can find materials for your research. One of them will be using the James White Library's website. There, you'll find the catalog and the databases. The catalog will be showing a little later. And the databases, you can start off with the databases A to Z link if you know the title of the databases. You'll know which databases you want to use for your search or your research. However, if you're not sure which are the databases, you should go to research guides by subject area. That's also an icon, a link in the web, and I'll be showing you this later on. Just determine which subject area your topic belongs to. Another way to find materials is to search the web. 
And here you also have a couple of options. There are open access initiatives, which provides free material. For instance, the directory of open access books, the directory of open access, open library, Sage Open, in academic journal. These are all open access uh, sites that you can use and retrieve free materials. And also you can search Google Scholar, which we'll be talking a little bit later on. Okay, now we're going to go back to the libraries page because I want to show you how to find background information. Because this would be the third step, most likely, of your research. So I'm going to share the library's web page. At the library web page, I'm going to go back to create a reference. So search and find databases A to Z in alphabetical order. Let's scroll down. Create a reference there. And let's use the same topic, American Indians. Remember that I showed you the mind map, but now we're talking about finding background information for our paper. And since this is encyclopedia, we have more than 46,000 items here. You can narrow this down, most likely. American Indians culture, for instance. Let's see what happens. Now we're down to 7,000 and so forth. You, keep, you can keep on narrowing the search or just try to check a few and see any interesting materials there. Another way that you can narrow your topic and find background information better is through Wikipedia. Now, Wikipedia, you shouldn't be citing. Most teachers will let you know that you shouldn't cite Wikipedia. But Wikipedia is an interesting because it brings you background information. You can have there an idea of a structure of a topic and how they're covering that topic, and mainly some important bibliography that you can, and references that you can uh, use by using Wikipedia. Now, I'll show you how to use a library's catalog to find books and articles. This is our catalog right here. This catalog, you can use one keyword, two or three keywords, even more, or you can write a small phrase and it will pick up the main words, or you can separate the keywords by end. So let's use the example that we've been using, which is American Indians. and see how many hits we get. So we have 3,451 hits for American Indians. But we can narrow this down, writing one more, for instance, American Indians culture. Let's see how it will narrow. It narrowed down to 176 items. In the left side, you can refine your search by place, by articles, by collection, by location, by language, or even by date. If we say 2010 to 2020 and apply, it should narrow down even more. Now it found 28 items. You can use the scale also to find articles. and it found more than 5,000 articles, 5,558. We can narrow this also by using the thesaurus term. For instance, indigenous people. So this is a related term, and we're down to 162 items. Here you you'll find the PDF or full text for most of these items. Not all of them, but most of them will be in PDF. Once you click the PDF and write down your credentials here at Andrews, 
you'll have the full text with you. And there it is, PDF full text for this document. And you have it. Another way that we can find articles is through the research guides. At the library's homepage, you scroll down until we get to research guides. These research guides, they're like a one-stop shop for all the materials, all the sources and links in the library by subject. And it's in alphabetical order. So you make sure it's in all guides and it's in alphabetical order. So for the topic that we have on Indians of North America, social life and cust customs and culture, we need to find history. So the main subject areas are here. Let's go to history. And this research guide is history, political science, law research guide. So here we're going to find the main databases for the search that we're doing on American Indians. And this is the main historical database that we have. If you click on articles, you're going to get many more databases related to this topic. These are the main databases in history. And these are general databases. Some of these or all of these are really, really good, especially Academic Search Complete and JSTOR. They're very multidisciplinary. They're very uh, interdisciplinary, very general. But let's start with America History and Life, which is a very specific database. And here I'm going to show you a few tips on how to narrow and broaden your search also. So if, so if we type here, American Indians, and I want this with quotation marks because it will look for American Indians together. If you don't put the, the, the quotation marks, it's going to look for American, it's going to look for Indians, and it might not have anything to do and you're going to get with your topic and you're going to get a lot of hits. But if we just leave it as American Indians and culture, for instance, and we change this, select a field. Well, a article has many fields. For instance, the title is a field, the author is a field, the keywords, it's a field, the abstract is another field, the text, the actual text is a field, the bibliography is another field. When I leave it, select a field, meaning that we want to find these words in anywhere in that article. But I can limit this I can narrow this by title, meaning that I want these words, these keywords within the title of the article. So since I have two boxes here and I can keep on adding boxes, the more boxes I use, am I broadening or am I narrowing the search? I'm narrowing the search. And if I leave it, select a field, am I broadening or limiting? or narrowing the search. Select the field, I'm broadening. But if I change it to title, then I'm narrowing. So I have two boxes, which is pretty narrow. I have this under quotation marks, which I'm narrowing. And now title, I'm narrowing even further. So let's see how many hits we get here. We get 17. But we can use this, for instance, to select a field, to open up a little bit this search. If we go American Angels and culture and just leave culture anywhere in the text, let's see what we have. From 17, we get 121. We broaden it. Just so you can have an idea how this works. Now, we did narrow with two, but we broaden it right now, both of them, both of these terms. Let's see the difference. Now we jump to 1,630. Let's go now to another database called Academic Search Complete, which is a more general and more 
interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary database. If we go back to our search guides, we were right over here. So we just go to academic search complete and let's continue uh, with the same topic. For the first box, now you can see we have academic search complete here. It's also from EBSCO. In the search box, if we go Indian, and I'm going to include an asterisk, this will broaden the search a little bit. It will include Indian and Indians. And I'll leave this as a title, so I'm narrowing it. And North America. With quotation marks, meaning that I want these both words together. And I'll also leave it as title, so I'm narrowing it. So this is pretty narrow, but this opens up a little bit, and, and this could be Indians. So let's see how many hits we get. We have 99 hits. What if we leave it as Indian with the asterisk, so it's Indian or Indians. And for North America, we'll add an asterisk right here, meaning that I want North America or North American, still as title. So we had 99. This should broaden our search a little bit. Now we have 388 hits, which it did broaden. What if we do something a little different? Indian, leave it like that. North America, we can leave it like that. Or American, or just simply American. So I want Indian or Indians, North America or North American, or it can also find American. Does this broaden or narrow our search? This is going to broaden our search because it's either, either one. So if the article has on its title the keyword or the word American or North America or even North American in North Americans, so this broadens our search quite a bit. So from 381 hits, we came up to 6,172. Quite an increase, right? So with little tweaks in these boxes, you can narrow or broaden your search. Now let's do something, one more here. One more box will narrow the search. So we're talking about social life. And I want these two words together, so they're under quotation marks, remember? Or, and it's capital letters, or customs. And let's leave it in the title too. Now we really narrow the search, although we're opening up with these R, but the fact that we have three words and we want them in the title, it really narrows. But if we leave this select a field, meaning that I can uh, live with this uh, in the whole document, let's see what happens. So we broaden a little bit. Now we, we're back to 99. What if we did something, again, a little different, Indian? And North America, I'm going to take this out. I'm also going to take this out. And I'm going to include not, Boolean operator not, not Canada. And I'm going to truncate this after the D because I want Canada, Canadian, Canadians, it will search all three. So this expanded, broadened a little bit, but this not um, narrowed our search because North America or North American can include Canada, right? It's not clear in that sense. So I said, no, I don't want Canada. So let's do it, not Canada. So from 99, we get 379. Let's take this asterisk and see North America 
not Canada or Canadian. Now we're down to 97. We had 98 first, so 97. So in this way, you can narrow and broaden your search as you tweak a little bit how you include the keywords in these boxes and how many boxes with the asterisk and the truncating the word or in quotation marks um, in order to, to find these exact terms within, in this case, the title. But you can also narrow your search to include only peer-reviewed journals. If you go to a normal database, let's say the Academic Search Complete and scroll down, uh, you'll find right here a button. If you click on it, it's going to retrieve only scholarly and peer-reviewed journals or even only full text. Now, this is the EBSCO database uh, or one of their databases. Other databases from other companies, you'll find this um, tool for scholarly peer-reviewed journals, maybe slightly in a different terminology or even in a different place on their splash page. But for Academic Search Complete, which is an EBSCO database that we're at, it's right over here. Now, we, I've shown you these databases, but I want to just point to a few others as we go to the, our, back to our research guide. If we click articles here, you're going to get even more databases related to the topic that you're looking for. I just showed you America History and Life. And Academic Search Complete is in this side together with JSTOR. I want to point out JSTOR and Wiley, SAGE. These are very general, broad, and interdisciplinary databases that you should also be using. I like to start with the more, more specific ones on this side. And then if I'm not satisfied, or I think I need more, I go to the more general ones here. I would like to show in this page also ebooks. We have more than 500,000 ebooks, and the main collections are right over here. Let me show you where I went again. I'm going to go back right here ebook collections. And these are the main ones that we have. Let's just look at ebook central from ProQuest. You can do an advanced search or browse by subjects. And since we're doing, uh, we're searching for American Indians, let's go American Indian. And I'm going to leave an asterisk because I will also search uh, American Indians. And I'm going to add the word here, history. Let's see if, let's see if we can find any eBooks for American Indian and Indians, history of American Indians. As I search, I found quite a bit. We really need to narrow this search, right? Uh, there's quite a lot of books here, and they're all available. If we click on its title, you can either download it on your device, meaning that this book will be in your device for a number of days, and you can download only a chapter. If you don't load, just read it online, you can do that and you can come back to it as many times as you want. If you download it to a device, only you have this books. It's as if you went to the library's uh, shelves and, and picked a book and checked out this book, went home with it, and it's yours for a certain number of days. No one else has it. But if you simply look at it uh, on your device, on your computer, it means that another patron, if uh, he or she wants this book, they may have it also. Let's look at some newspapers. So I want to take you back to the library's homepage. Newspapers sometimes are very useful depending on the search that you're doing. I'm going back to the library's homepage. Here it is. I want to take you to Melcat because I want to show a specific 
database for newspapers. It's not only one newspaper. Melcat, then you go to e-resources. In alphabetical order, if you scroll down, and since I know the title of the newspaper, database of newspapers, and the title of it is Newspaper Source Plus, so I clicked on the end, scroll down, it's right here. Once you're here, you can do a basic search or advanced search. Let's try in the search indigenous people. Indigenous peoples. Let's limit with the title, narrow it down, and let's see how many hits we have. We get 655. But let's narrow down even further. American or America and truncated so we get America, Americas, and America. Let's leave it with select a field to broaden a little bit. It's 125, but if we want to narrow it, we'll also have title for this keyword. Let's see what happens now. Now we're down to four hits. Now, what I'd like to do is to show you if you don't have, or better, if you don't find the article that you're looking for, you saw it on a reference from another article and you're looking in our databases, but you don't find it, it's not there. Sometimes it will ask you or um, suggest that you buy that article. Don't do that. You're first going to look in other databases in the library because most likely you're searching in one database, but we have almost 200 databases and some of them do overlap. So we'd like to see if uh, other databases or another database will index that journal that you're looking for. Obviously it's an article within a journal, but we're looking for journals. Does the library have this journal or not through a database? Well, it was clear to you that it wasn't through that database that you were looking, but we're going to search all the databases at once. So I'm back at the library's homepage, search and find. Let's go online journals and books, and then we we'll change this to journals only. Let's say that this the title of this journal that you're looking for, and you didn't find it in the database that you were uh, searching, is called American Indian Quarterly. So we'll search. And this tells me that JSTOR brings this article from this periodical better. We need to make that clear. It's a periodical, 1974 to 2014. From 1990 to the present, we have in all of these databases. And also from 1990 to 2011 in the Humanities Source, which is another database. So you need to have in mind or jot down right somewhere the date of publication of this and volume and issue. So you can easily see if it's in one of these databases. Once it's there, you click on the database that you want. And on the right side, in case of EBSCO's uh, databases, will be here at the right side. Let's say it's a 2014. Let's say it's volume 38, issue three that you're looking for. And now you have the table of contents of that year, volume, and issue. And you find the article and most likely, or it should be in either full text HTML or in, or in PDF. Okay, next, what you should do, what if you don't find it through the, using periodicals A to Z? You realize that it's really not there, so now, you have still a third option, 
which is to go back to the library's homepage, scroll down a little bit until you find interlibrary loan. So here's the link, the icon to interlibrary loan. Remember, you need to know, you need to have it on the side written or in a split screen, uh, the complete information for this article that you want, the, the author, the title of the article, um, the title of the periodical, and so forth. So there's two small forms here that you need to fill. This one is just a patron or personal information. And then the second is the bibliographic information. You'll need to change this to journal, journal article, and only fill out the appropriate information regarding the journal. So these first ones are all for books. Now you have the journal title. You don't need to jot down the ISSN. You don't need to include here, but you can. The article title, the article author, the volume, number, journal date, as you can see, pages, and submit. As soon as our team finds this article anywhere in the United States, they will uh, send you a copy on your desktop, on your device, so you can have it. It's yours. It's completely free. So never pay for an article if you don't find it uh, really quickly. First, you go to journals A to Z, which is right here. Click on journals, type the title of the periodical, and search, and we're going to, the system will search all of our databases to find if that specific journal is carried or indexed by any one of them. And lastly, I'd like to show you a video on how you can evaluate the sources. Evaluating the source is extremely important, especially if it's a web page, because you need to make sure that it's reliable. And so, you go to the library's homepage, right here, I'm just showing you. Scroll down, go to information literacy programs. Like you saw the video in the beginning of this presentation. I'm going to go there again, information literacy modules, and this time, I'm going to click the module evaluating information. This is from Credo. We call it Credo Instruct. There's almost 60 videos here evaluating sources. Let's watch this video. Having trouble finding reliable sources of news and information? This video will help you critically evaluate sources using these five criteria, authority, accuracy, currency, relevance, and objectivity. Since anyone can publish information online, it's important to know whether or not a source is authoritative. To be an authority on a subject, an author must be accepted as an expert by professionals in his or her field. For example, an article in an academic journal is likely to be more authoritative than a personal blog post. Determine the accuracy of a source by researching the author's credentials, affiliations, and other published works. For sources found online, this type of information is displayed on the About Us page. Accurate sources rely on the objective interpretation of evidence. Scientific reports, for example, often include a methodology section that describes the research process to validate the author's conclusions. These types of sources typically are peer-reviewed, meaning their content has been reviewed by experts on the topic. Beware of sources that put out misinformation or unverifiable claims. If you can't verify who said what or how the data were obtained, the source may not be accurate. Investigating a source's references will help you assess its accuracy. If you find the same facts and figures in other sources, the information most likely is accurate. Currency is determined by the date the source was created. Depending on your subject, a source's currency may determine its usefulness. In the science and technology disciplines especially, advances are made at a rapid pace. 
which means past results quickly become dated or discredited, but new isn't always better. Sometimes older sources may be required to better understand current advances on a given subject. While web sources like blogs record when a page was last updated, it doesn't mean that all of the information is up to date. Outdated information may be rebranded or mixed in with new materials. Verifying the currency of the research or statistics will help you determine if the findings are reliable. The value of a source depends on its relevance to your research question. First, consider how much the resource covers. For background information, try an overview article or encyclopedia entry. For more in-depth information, you'll want to consult sources that discuss your specific research topic. Closely analyzing what a resource does or doesn't discuss will help you choose sources that align with your research need. Objectivity relates to a resource's purpose and point of view. When a source is objective, it means the creator uses evidence rather than personal opinion to reach logical conclusions. Biased sources, on the other hand, may present evidence in a way that supports predetermined conclusions. Other sources even may intentionally distort the facts to poke fun at a person or event. Measure a source's objectivity by investigating its publisher. You may discover economic or political factors that influenced the creator's interpretation of evidence. Keep in mind that an abundance of advertisements on a web page may mean that the information is financially backed by a third party. As you can see, there are many factors that define a high quality source. By using the criteria discussed in this video, you'll be well on your way to finding reliable sources. So this ends our presentation. This is my contact information. I'm Dr. Silas Marcus. My phone number is 4716263. My email is silas at andrews.edu. Please feel, feel free to contact me anytime you want or you need, or if you want an overview of this material, please let me know. I'll be more than happy to share this again with you and help you in your research. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Success in your studies. And God bless.